ends up the store manager was a bit of a drama bug. Okay, so he sees multiple alarms. They're both on separate racks. Yeah, you know, it is what it is. So we're going to come over to rack B. And we're going to look over here. And I just want to show you. Right, so this is rack B. And we're going to go over to uh, condenser. Because today is really hot today. 255 PSI target 80. So we kind of know that that's not doing good. But if we look at all of our pressures are okay. They're about where we want them. Now we're going to come over here. We're going to check the refrigerant on this rack too. Always got to check the refrigerant. There's one ball, two balls floating in the surge tank. That's plenty. And if we come over here to our sight glass, we can see that there's a full column of the refrigerant going through it. So more than likely, it's not a refrigeration issue. Now, on a day like today, with a condenser, most people, they run and they go get the sprinklers. Let's check on the subcooler, see how the subcooler's doing, okay? Subcoolers are important. It moves heat outside the building more efficiently. If that's messed up, it's not going to be working. So if you look at this one half subcool, economic subcool, right? We click on this. Cut in 60 degrees. What temperature is it? 98. But it's off. Going to come down here. Economic subcool. 98. But it's off. I don't know why. Now we're going to come over here and let's verify with our hands. We're going to touch it. Is it cold? It's not cold. Well, that's kind of weird. So let's compare it to the other rack. This other rack over here, refrigeration, A, condenser, 200 PSI. That makes sense. That's manageable. What's going on outside? This subcool is working. You can see there's ice building up. It's cold to the touch. Okay, so let's go over here and look and see if there's anything that we can do. Now, you don't want to just flip stuff on. You want to kind of take a look and, and use your noodle and see. Did somebody shut it off? And maybe is it shut off for a reason? Is it leaking or something? Well, let's see. Let's take a look. So we're going to trace out the pipe. So if we look at this subcool pipe right here, that's open. That's open. So the in is open. And we're going to look to the out. The out doesn't even have a doesn't even have a valve. This is another out. Doesn't even have a valve. So yeah, as far as I can tell, so this is uh, the liquid line going in right there. No valve on that, obviously. It ends up, it just goes in. Then that same liquid line is going to come out down here. And to go here and become your liquid header. So it goes in and out. That's fine. So now we're going to look over here. We have our subcooler liquid in which is open goes into the subcooler right over there and then we have our subcooler suction line which comes down here come over here this is valved open as well so we're going to try to figure out why is that not going so real quick i just wanted to say so i'm looking at the subcooler for two for three reasons one you got to make sure your rack is good okay first and foremost just make sure your rack is good before you go out to your condenser because you got to make sure it's functioning somewhat okay you got to just take stock of your equipment what do you have is it working number two is a lot of times the subcoolers are broken and it's part of the entire system so just knowing in my mind okay that okay the subcooler is broken I need to fix it at a later date maybe it could be affecting the head pressure and how it's doing things okay like just having that in your mind going okay maybe this is affecting something right is important now number three there was also a high suction pressure call that I didn't make clear in the video for this call so the high suction pressure Okay, part of that, it was on the low temp system. Now, the subcooler helps subcool the refrigerant that goes into the low temp system. If your subcooler is not working on your low temp system, on these high stress days, it's going to cause a high suction pressure because your low temp system isn't efficient enough at removing heat to bring down that suction pressure.
So you need to make sure your subcooler is working. I did not mention in the video that this call also included a high suction pressure on the low temperature rack. Just wanted to make that clear now because it might seem disjointed if I don't clarify. Anyway, back to the video. So what I did was I compared it to this rack over here because I wasn't sure maybe there's some like if statement in the program that says if the DC feed is on, not to turn it on or something. I don't know. So I just kind of looked over there. The D superheater is on over there. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go over here. Okay, we're going to go into here. And what I did was I manually turned them on because I want to see if it can run. So right now I can physically feel quite cold. Okay, I can see that the lights turned on on the solenoids. Okay, and I can also see a little dongle dangle thing or whatever you want to call it is, is going. So, you know, except on that top one. Maybe we gotta look more into that. So, I'll look more into this one. But it feels cold, at least it's half running. So I'm gonna go over here and we're gonna dig into it further because what that program should be saying is it should be saying, if I'm above a certain temperature, I'm gonna turn that son of a gun on. And it's not doing that. So, for whatever reason, it's not. So. We're gonna take a look. So after I manually on those valves, they now seem to be turning auto on. So that might have just been a blip in the program uh, for whatever reason. A lot of these older controllers, they'll get bogged down and they'll do loopy things. So now that that's gone, we're gonna go outside and check the condenser. Because obviously, if you've got a head pressure problem, you can't just, you know, you gotta check your condenser and see how it's doing. Okay, I just wanted to be clear, a lot of the time, okay, when you fix the subcooler, it's actually going to raise your head pressure, okay? Because it's more efficiently moving the heat to your condenser. Now, most of the time, now it does make your system more efficient at removing the heat, so it's possible it can lower it over a period of time because now it's more efficiently moving the heat out of the building. But in this case, it was so hot, it increased my head pressure but it removed my high suction pressure alarm because now the heat was properly being expelled from the building just wanted to mention that so you understand what i'm doing so as you can see well maybe you can't see great two motors aren't working okay so let's dig into that and figure out why you can take a look it might be hard to see from this vantage point one of those louvers are stuck shut preventing the heat from getting out so We've got a few things to figure out on this condensing unit. So every single contactor is pulled in, but is every single fan running? I would say no. As we saw before, that's not true. So now we're gonna test, what we're gonna do is, well you can look, I'm thinking that those ones might be bad up there. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna test voltage, and we're gonna find which ones are not good. So, I checked the voltage here. Both of them, no voltage. Check the voltage on the top, no voltage. Check the voltage on the bottom of the fuses, no voltage, and then at the top of the fuses, voltage. So those fuses are blown. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test across the contactor for continuity, because you wanna see if that contactor works. So just like so, we're gonna test for ohms across the contactor, and you wanna have you know a relatively small amount. If you get something like a thousand or a hundred ohms, you know that that contactor is not doing well. So I'm gonna check the ohms across the contactor. Then we're gonna disconnect the motor and ohm out the motors and see if maybe the fuses just went because it was a high load, um, you know, or something. But we wanna make sure that we're not gonna, you know, turn on motors that are gonna fry or arc or spark or something. So now we're gonna test the motor just from the bottom of the contactor. And we're just gonna test it. So we're gonna test these two together. See that? 317. Now we're going to text the next two together. 319. Now we're going to text these two together. 317. And now we're going to touch the ground. Zero. The middle one shorts out the ground. So that motor's kaput. No good. Now we're going to go over to the next one, okay? So it's just hard to do everything with, you know, one hand. Test out this one. mainly a me issue. So it ends 
stuff is not a me issue, it's just doing something weird. So that motor is also kaput. So we're not gonna remove those fuses or anything. Um, and we're gonna have to write up and replace those motors. As you see, I wrote bad on them. In case anyone else comes, I'm gonna go shut them down to control it. Now, if you wanted to, and I just opened it up and took a look, you can open up these panels and check the motors at the actual motors, which would be more accurate because the line, the run, like the run out to the motors could be shorted or could have the issue and the motors themselves could be fine. But the thing is, I would do that if there was a plug or an easy way to do it. But the only way to do it on this system was if I were to take out all the motors. Now we have two or three of these stores that I'm currently working at going down right now. The racks are failing. So you gotta put on your big boy pants and you gotta say, what does the customer want? You know, that test is, you know, accurate maybe, maybe 90% of the time or so. Um, let's go look at, I might not be able to do those ones. I just removed the fuses. So that text, that test is accurate, you know, 85% of the time or so. Okay, so you gotta think to yourself, what does your customer want? Does your customer want you to allow two or three other of their stores to go down so you can make extra certain on this call when they're already paying you 100, $110 an hour, whatever your rate is where you are. I know some people up where I am, I'm gonna use my fuse puller and pull that out. They are, if you're talking, they're charging 125, I even heard $175 an hour, right? So I'm sorry, but that, that's legitimately a motor. That is like, I mean, maybe, maybe that's a bit dramatic, but so it's like if you're wrong or if you allow another store to go down. So I'm just saying sometimes in the field, yeah, the Boy Scout way is to go over there, pull out those motors and double, double check. But right now, just at how bad it is out, how many stores are going down, you know, we kind of don't have time for that. Now we could come back here another day troubleshoot further and verify but then again they're gonna again pay $125 an hour for you to be there and troubleshoot and probably get the same exact um, you know uh, what's it called same exact uh, diagnosis that you just got so I'm gonna remove those fuses okay rope bat on them and I'm gonna write up the motor so I'm just what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna get the tag of the condensing unit i'm going to order the motors through that so i just thought i'd mention okay when i return right i'm going to order the three motors okay with the fan blades and the fuse i'm going to go back and i'm going to do the proper test on each motor when i remove it in order to verify that yes the motor is bad and then I'm going to also test the wire runs before I put in the new motors, okay? I want you to understand, I am not encouraging you to do poor practices, okay? And then when I'm there, I will evaluate each motor. And if, let's say, two out of the three motors are bad, or even one out of the three motors are bad, or maybe none of them are bad, we will just return the motor, okay? Back to the store, or we'll have a discussion with the manager, and say, hey, we're gonna sell you these motors, we're gonna leave them in the machine room, and next time this happens, we'll have them on site. Especially, let's say two of them are good and there's only one motor that, that is actually okay and the wire runs bad or something like that, we'll leave it in, in the machine room if, they, if it's okay with them, so we have it for the next call, because getting condenser fan motors in the summertime can be a bit of a chore, so. I just wanted you to, to know that I'm not encouraging bad practices. The only reason why I did the quick test in this video is because of the stressful circumstances, okay? We're talking, I know stores, I've talked to them, people didn't get there in time and they lost $25,000 worth of ice cream, just ice cream, okay? Only ice cream, they just lost their ice cream cases, $25,000. Okay, if a rack goes down, you're talking there's $50,000 worth of product, sometimes more, okay, that is at stake here. So, I'm just telling you, high stress situation, on call, you got to make the best choices you can. Check with your lead tech, check with your boss, okay, don't John Wayne it. 
Okay, have input, have some counselors in your life to help you make these choices in these high stress situations. I am not trying to encourage bad practice. Okay, back to the video. So if we look at, we can see that all of those are running. This one right here, it ends up, it's actually fan actuated. So we might actually have three fans that are out. So some of them are actually actuated by some type of like uh, modulating device, but these ones are just, they open up by the airflow themselves. So it looks like we might have three fans out. So we're gonna go back and check to see if this one's bad too. So you can see this motor's toast as well. Now also look at this. This contactor, that's 13, 15, that's way too much. You should be getting like one, two most. So we're gonna replace that contactor too. I might just replace the other two contactors as well just to make sure to protect the motor this won't happen again. I'm gonna remove those fuses. Removed all the fuses and wrote bad. So we gotta see what head pressure this thing can go to. So if we look down there, that's at about 325. We're gonna look up in the controller and make sure that they match. So we're gonna to go to alarms. So we're gonna to go to configuration. Okay, then we're gonna to go to alarms. Then we're gonna refrigeration, rack B, condenser. Head pressure, 325, okay? So right now we're at 277. So you gotta make an educated guess as a technician, okay? So this doesn't have a mystic system that works here. If I had a mystic system that worked, I would probably put it on without hesitation. But so now you gotta put on, again, your big boy pants, talk to your store manager, ask him what he wants. Okay, for instance, does he want, we have sprinklers up here. I turn on that sprinkler, put it under there. We're gonna lose about 50 PSI of head pressure, okay? As you see that's hooked up, all you do is you just move it right under there, plug it into uh, the closest water hookup, which in this case is right over there. I don't know if you can see that spout right there. There we go, kinda you can see it, ah, whatever. It's right there. So you hook up to that closest water hookup and that'll probably drop 25 to 50 pounds. That'll make sure it works. But then you're gonna cost them two to three hundred dollars, you know, in just a couple days easy in water bill. Like if you leave that hooked up all month, we have stores that talks about thousands of dollars of extra just for water bill. So if you can make it through, make it through. Number two, as you see this, that'll turn the junk in a couple summers of using those sprinklers. Okay, your condenser will rot out. Remember, you have chlorine, iron, like magnesium, manganese, all different kinds of stuff in that water, especially if you're city, okay? And what's gonna happen is that water is gonna erode your condenser, turn it to junk within a couple summers. So yeah, you save some product now, but you do it too much and you're gonna destroy your condenser and then your, you know, your customer's gonna have a $30,000 condenser replacement. And you know, as an honest contractor, you don't wanna cost your customer money. It's your job to help them. That's your job, okay? So that's just something to consider. So right now, I'm actually gonna call my lead and I'm, I'm gonna go with, okay, three, 277. I have some other jobs to do here. I'm gonna try to get those jobs done. And if it's 300, before I go, I'm putting up the sprinklers for sure. 290, yeah, probably putting up the sprinklers. If it's not, if it's under that, if it's 275, still 250, I'm gonna leave it because tomorrow it's supposed to rain. And then we're just gonna have to make a priority to come back here and replace those motors. So, yep, that's it. That's how you do it. So this was the head pressure issue here. So what do we do? We fix the sub cooler. Okay, we're gonna need three contactors and three fan motors, so fan blades, and we're gonna need 15 fuses to replace as well. So remember, get all your pot information for everything. I'm actually just gonna zip this open and take a look at the motor and get the pot information off. So anyway, like, subscribe and all that. And uh, yeah, hit that bell and whatever you wanna do, I don't know. Hopefully you learned something. That's how you do it.